Ladies and gentlemen, fasten your seatbelts. Sunday night, WWE will present Backlash with the tagline, The Greatest Wrestling Match Ever. The Backlash pay-per-view is the greatest wrestling match ever. If you're ready to listen to the greatest showman theme about 400 times and have Tom Phillips and Byron Saxon tell you till you're blue in the face that it's the greatest wrestling match ever, well, this show is going to be for you because, oh my God, they've got a show lined up in store for them. Okay, this show, granted, you might say, Oh, well, Elitist, why do you post this video when we only know five matches? Hear me out. This is why I post my pay-per-view previews a week before the pay-per-view, because these videos are completely irrelevant after the pay-per-view goes off the air. So I'm trying to maximize how much time this video is, like, on YouTube and is relevant, all right? That's why I post these videos so early on. It doesn't help me that WWE only announced, like, four to five matches for their pay-per-views, like, the week before. So, literally, like, what WWE normally do is they announce, like, one, two, three, four, five matches in the day or two leading up to the pay-per-view. Like, I can bet Backlash will end up having, like, nine to ten matches. They'll probably add a bunch of meaningless matches. Like, knowing WWE, instead of adding matches that might make some sense, they're going to add random matches. Like, knowing, knowing WWE, they're going to add... God, I don't know, Cesaro versus Apollo Crews to the kickoff show. Then I've just come up with that off the top of my head, and even that has more thought go into it than what they do to decide these matchups. Or I'm probably gonna get some random as hell matchups on this show. Matches which are hardly gonna make this show better. I mean, seriously, like the, the card we've got on paper at the moment, the five matches we've got listed down to take place at Backlash 2020, it, they're, they're not looking great, if I'm being honest. I mean, really nothing on this show is making me think, oh damn, I've got to see Backlash 2020, the greatest wrestling match ever, the Backlash pay-per-view, with the greatest showman theme song. Like, it, it's just like, this show is just a meme. That That's the best way I can describe Backlash 2020, it's just a meme. Because, I, I guarantee you, the WWE higher-ups, the creative team, the production, they all know, well, all the fans know, everyone knows, Randy Orton knows, Edge knows, that no matter what they do, on Sunday night, in their one-on-one -on -one match, it won't be the greatest wrestling match ever. But they've gone ahead and called it that, and they've called the whole bloody pay-per-view the, the greatest wrestling match ever, which makes so little grammatical sense it's not funny. That makes absolutely zero sense. How can a pay-per-view be the best match ever? What? What? So, anyway, without further ado, I'm getting get into these five matches. I don't want this preview to be longer than about... <sighs> give or take 12 to 15 minutes, because I'm going to get a rant in about a couple of things, but yeah, besides that, let's just get into this preview and predictions. Let's, let's get this Backlash pay-per-view previewed, so you guys can go on with your day. So yeah, I guess I'll start off, <sighs> which match to begin with? I honestly don't know. Uh, Braun Strowman in the Universal title, okay. Braun Strowman will defend the Universal Championship on Sunday night against The Miz and John Morrison, not in a triple threat match, in a two-on-one handicap match. Now, as my good pal, pal, wrestling with Heat made like numerous times now, Braun Strowman, this reign he's had since WrestleMania has been one of the worst world championship reigns in the history of the company. This reign is up there with the great Khali, it's up there with Jinder Mahal, and it, it's up there because one, just how, how bad his segments are. Like, even the stuff with Bray Wyatt, where they're telling a decent story, it's just Braun Strowman doesn't make anything better, because the Braun Strowman character on TV, this is not shots at Braun the person, okay? I need to differentiate that. Braun the person's, by the sounds of things, an amazing guy, but the character on TV, Braun Strowman, literally, his character is he's a white trash redneck hick, and he says, get these hands, with this, with this tone. Get these hands! That's Braun Strowman. So you've got that guy having a feud with Miz and Morrison, where Miz and Morrison are literally doing DX 2009, Slime Time Live, Double Dare 2000, Nickelodeon Kids Choice Awards, you know, BS, G-rated crap. That's the feud. That's the storyline we've got between Braun Strowman, The Miz, and John Morrison. It is garbage. Seriously, this is your universal program in 2020. This is your universal title program, sorry. Okay, this is the top championship on SmackDown. This is apparently your A show because it gets the most viewers. 
SmackDown's your A-show, and your main event scene is Braun Strowman, The Miz, and John Morrison doing Double Dare 2000 Nickelodeon BS. You're kidding, right? And to all the people who've been saying to me on Twitter, well, all the people, like the four people who said this two weeks ago, oh, well, is long-term storytelling, man? L- long-term storytelling? They're just waiting for The Fiend to come back, man. And to that I say, why do we have to wait a whole extra month? This is where my re- re- wrestling fan impatience comes in. W- why couldn't we just have The Fiend versus Braun Strowman at this pay-per-view? Why do you have to wait till Extreme Rules and, God forbid, even SummerSlam? Why do you have to wait another few months to see Braun Strowman lose the title to The Fiend? Why can't we do this now? This Braun Strowman run is miserable. It's some of the worst television I've seen. Braun Strowman getting interviewed by Kayla Braxton, or was it Charlie Crusoe, whichever one. She's, you know, he's getting interviewed, and then they just there's a bucket of slime dumped on the interviewer. And Braun Strowman's got like, oh, You had slime dumped on you. Like, it's just crap TV. I I hate it. It's garbage. And that is our Universal title program. And as for a prediction, if you honestly think the Miz and John Morrison are going to win this match, hell, I kind of want the Miz and John Morrison to win this match. At least that would be a talking point. Because if they're just going to have Braun Strowman win a handicap match in nine minutes, so literally, this is what's going to happen at Backlash. You can get... Strowman being dominant for the first, like, two to three minutes. Miz and Morrison will beat him up in their corner for five minutes. Then Strowman will run around ringside, shoulder charge them, hit a couple of power slams and pin them. He'll probably stack Miz on top of Morrison and pin them both. That's what they're going to do. Because a tag team's challenging the Universal title for some reason. So that's the Universal title situation. Braun Strowman's retaining over the Miz and John Morrison. If you honestly, genuinely pick Miz and Morrison to win this match... And God forbid, WWE, if you have Miz and Morrison win this match, <laughs> I can't be bothered. So yeah, Strowman to retain the Universal title. Uh, moving on, I guess we'll cover Oscar Nia Jax. This one, the Raw Women's Championship. To, to steal a phrase from the Sports and Wrestling Rundown, who cares? Who, who, who cares? Seriously, no one cares. I mean, Oscar's Women's Champion is really cool. I love that they have her as the women's champion. She's perfect for that role, given the pandemic with barely any crowds. The amount of energy energy she brings to the show. I think Asuka's the perfect woman to be the Royal Women's Champion. As for Nia Jax, I could say so much. I really could. I mean, you guys already know with Nia Jax. If, if you're a big Nia Jax fan, you're, if you're a Nia Jax stan account, if you're someone who marks out for Nia Jax whenever she comes out, Please unsubscribe from this channel if you are. Just please go away. I just don't... I don't care. Like, it's just Nia Jax. Yeah, I, I would throw hate, her direction, throw hate in her direction, but I'm not about that. We all know Nia Jax is incredibly reckless in the ring. She, she's basically... I mean, she, she just... I'm not, I'm not going to comment. Oscar's going to beat Nia Jax and retain the title. If you have Nia Jax win... Granted, I could see them doing this. I could see Nia Jax winning the title... I could see Nia Jax beating Oscar and winning the championship because Vince McMahon sees that Nia Jax is getting nuclear heat online because uh, Nia Jax has been you know, murdering Kyrie Sane or attempting to multiple times in the past like seven weeks. But at the same time, I'm assuming common sense will prevail. Oscar will beat Nia Jax and retain the championship. So that's the Raw Women's title. As for Jeff Hardy and Sheamus, this match is the match I'm most looking forward to on the pay per view, which. The only reason I'm saying that is because they've tried to have a storyline. It's so sad that WWE in the year 2020, just by them trying to do something and doing a, like a big angle, I automatically care most about what they tried the angle for, you know? Like, I'm, I automatically care about Jeff Hardy and Sheamus above all other matches and storylines because they're actually being creative. Oh my god, what? A wrestling company uses creativity and the viewers become more invested? Oh my god, wow. Oh my god, did, did the Jeff Hardy and Sheamus segment that opened SmackDown get the best, like, you know, opening, you know, best viewership to SmackDown in, like, months? Oh my god, wow. Uh, big angles equals ratings. Oh wow. It, 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 distasteful angles equals ratings. Who'd have thought? Who'd have thought? Bruce, Vince, clowns. So yeah, Jeff Hardy, Sheamus, this match, a lot of people are going to predict Jeff Hardy. He could well win. I mean, seriously, he could. Uh, I, d- I don't know who to predict. I want to predict Sheamus. I really do. I can see Sheamus winning this match because, look, a lot of people are just saying that, oh, well, Jeff Hardy's going to win and then he's going to you know go on 
and feud with The Fiend when The Fiend wins the title. But at the same time, given that this is SmackDown, I can just see Sheamus beating Jeff Hardy and then us getting Sheamus versus Braun Strowman at Extreme Rules. Yeah, you know, I'm predicting that. Sheamus is beating Jeff Hardy and we're getting Sheamus, Braun Strowman, Extreme Rules, Universal Championship. I, I can see that. You, can't you? I can see that. Can't, like, it, it just makes too much sense. They're going to hold off The Fiend winning the title till SummerSlam. So we'll get another five weeks of Sheamus feuding with Braun Strowman and it'll just be just terrible TV. So Sheamus to beat Jeff Hardy. Then... Uh, do, I, do I talk about the quote-unquote greatest wrestling match ever, or do I talk about McIntyre-Lashley? Uh, 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 Drew McIntyre-Lashley, okay. This, the WWE Championship, I pretty much made a whole video about why Lashley will win the championship. This one, honestly, I'm so on the fence, it's not funny. I can see this going either way. I gave seven pretty damn hard-to-argue reasons why Lashley will win the title in that video, which has got, like, I think, like nearly 500 views by now. Might be at 500 views already. That one's doing really well, but got it. This could go either way. Uh, I, I, I'm, stand by, I'm standing by the fact that it's too early for Drew McIntyre to lose the championship. It just is. Drew McIntyre was coronated as the face of Raw and the face of the company at WrestleMania, winning in the main event. And it's just too early to have Drew McIntyre lose the belt. It's only been two months. Can you tell me, WWE or people who hate McIntyre, what's one thing he's done wrong? Seriously, he's done his role. It's the absolute best he could do it. He's absolutely smashing every segment he's a part of. Everything he's doing is entertaining. I, I just don't see the point of giving the title to Lashley. Do you give it to him next month at Extreme Rules? I hope not. Like, God forbid. But I'm, I'm just going to hope that, you know, logic prevails and Drew McIntyre retains against Bobby Lashley. So that's the prediction there. Drew McIntyre retains against Bobby Lashley. But then again, as I said in that video, if Lashley wins the title... I would not be shocked in the slightest. So that's the WWE Championship. As for the, I guess this is the main event, the greatest wrestling match ever, which there's so much wrong with that. There really is. The greatest wrestling match ever. Edge versus Randy Orton in the year 2020. The greatest wrestling match ever. It's a tagline that has single-handedly set both of these guys up for failure. No matter what they do at Backlash, even if it's like a really good match by their standards, like a four and a half star singles match, God forbid, even if it is, like, who really cares? I mean, at the end of the day, this is a singles match involving Randy Orton. Now, if you can tell me the last Randy Orton singles match, one-on-one, -on -one, regular, clean singles match, that's been overly amazing, that you can recall off the top of your head as being some great match that transcends years and transcends wrestling, please feel free to come and tell me. I mean, as far as Randy Orton matches... I can't honestly remember the last one that I thought, damn, I, I'd need to go out of my way to go watch that match. That match, though, OMG. Like, it's Randy Orton. Have you seen the style Randy Orton wrestles? Randy Orton isn't someone who is a Shawn Michaels, is a, God, who's a five-star match machine, a Kenny Omega type, a, a Kazuchika Okada, you know? He's not one of these guys who is like a big bout machine. He's Randy Orton. We all know Randy's style, methodical, storytelling, the old school, and I appreciate that. I, I don't personally, as a viewer, need five-star garage-fed matches every match to quantify someone as being a good wrestler. But at the same time, it, 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 with that point said, this is Randy Orton, and the chances are this match is going to be kind of like... Uh, I, what, what should I compare this to? Not Johnny Gargano and Keith Lee at TakeOver, but like a kind of match where it's like 20 minutes, there's about... The first few minutes, the baby face, so Edge in this situation, gets some offense in and some back and forth. And then there's going to be like a 10 to 12 minute block in the match where it's going to be Randy Orton literally beating up Edge just for like 10 to 12 minutes. And it's going to be kind of dull. That is really theoretically what's going to happen because it's a singles match. There's no way around that. It's a Randy Orton singles match. This is Edge in 2020. You're not getting ricochet circus acrobatics in this match. You're getting methodical storytelling. And as a result, it's just going to be a good match. Will it be a great match? Hope so. But will it be the greatest wrestling match ever? Will the pay-per-view tagline be personified in this main event match between Edge and Orton as the greatest wrestling match ever? No. We all know it won't. 
it, you've set themselves, you've set them up for failure. Randy Orton on Twitter and social media makes a bit of a meme out of it. Everything he posts now, he, he does hashtag greatest wrestling match ever. It's it's just a joke. It really is. In my prediction for this match, honestly, I, this is another one. I, I haven't thought about who's going to win this match. I just assume Edge would win this match. But if you have Randy win, then are you going to do a third match between these two? I mean, surely not, right? Surely we don't get Edge Orton 3 at, like, SummerSlam. Surely not. It just, like, the, the feud shouldn't be happening at all right now. But I guess, I I, I don't know. I, I, I'm just going to say Edge wins this match, honestly. Actually, then again, I... Uh, I've had Mac I'm saying that McIntyre, Strowman, and Oscar are all retaining their titles, so the likelihood that Orton wins this match is high because they need a heel to win. I don't know, dude. It doesn't matter. It just... Whoever wins this match, what's it leading to? I mean, I've said it for months that Randy Orton needs to feud with Drew McIntyre for the WWE Championship, and if you go through McIntyre's whole title reign without doing him versus Orton for the title in a program, then you're a bunch of brain-dead buffoons. And at this rate, you could have Lashley win the title, and that becomes irrelevant. So, I don't know. I'm going to say... Uh, I'm going to say Edge wins. But at the same time, if just Edge, Edge beats Orton twice, and then uh, what? where does Orton go from there? Then again, this is Monday Night Raw, so he'll probably show up the next night, and it'll be irrelevant. So, yeah, that's the backlash predictions. In summary, Sheamus beats Jeff Hardy. Oscar retains over Nia Jax. Braun Strowman retains the Universal Championship. Uh, Drew McIntyre retains against Bobby Lashley, and Edge beats Randy Orton. So those are the predictions. I don't really care if I'm right or wrong. It doesn't matter. I'm not like a predictor like JT Dangerously who takes pride in the keeping streaks and whatnot. I, I don't really care. It's just a preview. It's a bit of fun. This pay-per-view is probably going to suck anyway. That's a very positive mindset to have. But just looking at the card, I honestly can't see one thing that captivates my interest. And maybe they add a couple of matches that I genuinely care about. But the likelihood they do that is so low that I don't expect it. So, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment, sub, because no drill. See ya.